Thank goodness for Mark Zinno. I say that for many reasons, but in this particular instance, I say it because he saved us from the old reverse sweep on the show yesterday, which hasn't happened in quite some time. Alas, we go one and two, uh, thanks to some late runs for the Dodgers getting that game over. 43 (laughs) and 23 is the run on the show now. Our first losing day in a while, Zinno. We went one and two, but thank you for that winner. Uh, You are going to get us started here in just a minute. On the ALCS, I'll handle NLCS Game 4. Show best bets going to be on Thursday Night Football. An ugly one between the Saints and Broncos. We're going to be hitting the prop market for that. But, uh, Mark, say whatever you'd like. As Your New York Yankees are going to move one step closer to the World Series uh, tonight, well, most likely. And we should, and uh, you're we going to be talking t- about Game 3 in Cleveland. Here in Cleveland. We should tell everybody first that uh, we have decided on the uh, terms of the ALCS wager between yourself and myself. Yes, we said uh, that yesterday. Uh, we, well, we, we didn't tell the audience, though. You and I did that, you know, or did we do that? Did we tell everybody that? Uh, we did. Maybe I, I think we did. Okay. We did. Yeah, we did. I think. <laughs> Maybe I should just go back to my corner and shut up and do what I'm told. All right, let's get on to ALCS Game 3. Everybody, in case you missed it yesterday, uh, effusive praise was, was the – Ryan Power will be, be applauding me for being a genius every time I speak uh, or every time he speaks, so – there is that. Okay, let's look at game three tonight. Clark Schmidt and Matthew Boyd are the starters. Uh, we're going to go first five under here. We'll take the four and a half, even though the, the juice is a little bit higher than what we're typically willing to to go through in Major League Baseball at, at around minus 145. Shop around for the alternate line at four and a half. Most lines, most books are posted three and a half, but let's put the extra run there just in case, and I'll explain why in a minute. But Clark Schmidt has a 1.39 ERA on the road this year, holding opposing hitters to a 211 batting average. He has been phenomenal on the road. Faced the Guardians once this year already, went five innings, gave up just three hits and one earned run. And so I'm confident here that Schmidt, who I think has been a better pitcher on the road, I think he's probably one of the more consistent pitchers in the Yankees rotation, um, is the guy that I trust the most to do what needs to be done here. Uh, And I backed him in the same spot against the Royals, and it was – Chef's kiss. So that said, the Yankees, however, on offense have been the beneficiary of a lot of Guardians' mistakes, errors, wild pitches, have given the Yankees runs that they didn't earn through the first two games. Because surprisingly, through games one and two, the Yankees are a just disgusting, nauseating, gross, ugh, two for 16 with runners in scoring position. If you can't put guys across the plate runners in scoring position, you're not going to win a lot of games. I would like to believe the Guardians, especially at home, will stop being dumbasses and booting the ball all over the place and not throwing it over, throwing it over the plate here. So from that standpoint, if they do that simply, they will allow less runs. Matt Boyd gets the start, or Matthew, for the Guardians, 2.73 ERA in the year, 1.13 whips since making his first start in August. He was pretty good against the Tigers in both of his outings, despite the short lease. In that game five, he only pitched two innings, but struck out five batters. Um, and really what the handicap boils down to is that if Boyd puts guys on and the Yankees actually get hits with runners in scoring position, then this under is in danger of not hitting. That's, that's really what it boils down to. But I just don't believe all of a sudden the Yankees are going to snap out of it. I've been screaming for some regression for the Yankees to do it. Uh, I just, I don't know that it's coming in this spot, especially on the road. Uh, if it does as a fan, I'll be happy as a better, I'll be wrong, but you know, Hey, the emotional hedge sometimes is, uh, is worthwhile. So let's go. First five under, four and a half between Yankees and Guardians tonight for my half of the double play. If this were next week, I would have to now say, Mark Zinno, what brilliance, what eloquence you just displayed there. But uh, it's, luckily, it's not next week. So we'll wait until next week till I have to say that every time. All right, that is the ALCS mark going with the under first five, four and a half. Smash that like button if you agree. I'm going to tackle the NLCS. Uh, boy, was my play wrong on the NLCS game three yesterday. Mark said the Mets game in the first five is what I gave out here on the show yesterday. Uh, they didn't score a run, uh, not only in the first five, but the entire game. How frustrating was were the Mets at the plate yesterday? Well, I'll tell you. Walker Bueller, who everybody wanted to fade, and rightly so, was the first pitcher. This is Opta. I'm gonna, I'll give credit where credit's due. Opta tweeted this out. But Walker Bueller was the first pitcher in MLB history to throw 90 or more pitches in a postseason start of four innings or less and not give up a single run. The Mets had their chances. They did not take... When Lindor struck out, you knew they were dead as a doornail, man. You absolutely knew they were dead as a doornail. So what am I going to do? 
here for game four. Well, I'm going to come back and take the Mets full game here. The Mets have not lost back. They've, or pardon me, they've lost back to back days only twice going all the way back to August 14th. And I am tempted, I was tempted, I should say, Mark, to play the Mets just in the first five. To me, if the Mets aren't winning after the first five, it's going to be pretty shaky uh, to see them uh, come from behind and win this game. As I said yesterday, they used up a lot of their positive bullpen, bull, bullpen variants, easy for me to say, against the Phillies. But let's look at the starting pitching matchup, okay? Yamamoto going for the Dodgers. They've won his last five starts. That sounds very impressive. Well, his ERA is actually 4.95 during that stretch. Meanwhile, Quintana for the Mets, team is 4-1 and one his last five starts. What's his ERA in that stretch? How about .61? He's allowed... Uh, no earned runs in four of those five starts. There's three earned runs total in that five-start stretch. I think there's a big starting pitching edge here for the Mets. They're at home, do or die. This team has not lost back-to-back days uh, very often in the second half. So I will play the Mets as money line underdogs, plus 115 for the game. Look, I uh, I want to thank Max Muncy <laughs> and Shohei Otani. <laughs> Uh, last night for the Mets were it was just a bad approach at the plate the second and third innings you and I were texting back and forth and the idea that it looked like every Mets batter was trying to hit a ball all the way to freaking Yonkers was ridiculous because all they had to do was get a single bit Walker Bueller was giving them a lot of free pitches free outs walks I mean uh, you know uh, the telecast made it sound like Walker 18 swings and misses I'm like are you guys watching the same game I am the Mets are going up there like free swinging like, like A-Rod back in the later part of his career, just hoping to walk into a fastball. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. The Mets took themselves out of that game. They easily should have gotten to Bueller. And if they pitch Bueller again, the Dodgers, the Mets are going to smack him around. So I'm waiting for him. To, I, I hope he gets on the mound again this series. It may have to be a long series to see it. We shall see. But all right. Yeah. So, Mark, first five under, four and a half in the ALCS. I like the Mets plus price uh, in the NLCS. It's Thursday night football, Mark Zeno, and it is a matter of... Uh, rather than who's playing, it's more like uh, who is not playing. There are a lot of key injury absences here in Broncos Saints. Uh, Sertain is the big one for the Broncos. Meanwhile, New Orleans, boy, do they have a lot of guys out on offense. Yeah. But the idea of Bo Nix being a field goal favorite on the road in this league uh, is repugnant, quite, quite frankly. Something. People, quite something. people were aghast when I gave Denver out as a 5% play a few weeks ago as a two-and-a-half-point home favorite against the Raiders. So here they're laying a field goal in New Orleans. It's the Sean Payton revenge game. You and I, when we talked before the show, said, hey, we're going to the prop market for this one. And Spencer Rattler, he's got to throw the ball to someone, right? And we think that person is going to be Jawan Johnson. Yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of different targets here uh, for Spencer Rattler that are names you probably don't know, whether it is Jawan Johnson Foster Moreau, the tight end, had a bunch of catches last week. Or Bub Means, the ever laughable Bub Um, Means, uh, which if you search around, you will find props for him out there. You and I both like Bub Means to go over his receptions prop. Uh, FanDuel has it at three and a half, uh, and the receiving yards is only at 31 and a half, which I think is a great play uh, if you can find Bub Means props out there. That said, uh, we're going to look to Juwan Johnson as the one, you know, target that really uh, Rattler will look to, to, try and, you know, get the ball down the field. Juwan Johnson caught each of his targets last week, all three of them. Uh, The previous week, he caught all five of his targets. Uh, And that's the thing about Johnson. He's running these kind of shorter routes that are underneath routes that are easy completions, which I think certainly helps us here at over two and a half. Not only that, um, this is a Saints offense. The last two weeks on average has only possessed the ball 23 minutes per game. They only had it for 20 against the Chiefs and 26 against the Buccaneers um, and both of those games they were trailing in. So they had to throw late, which begs the question of, you know, why they didn't have bigger numbers, but they're going to get more opportunities on offense here this game because Denver's offense is so inept that they'll be punting a lot and uh, Rattler will have more opportunities. And I think the more opportunities that they have uh, and where they're not trailing, where the game is close, the more efficient the passing game I think would be overall. Denver's going to be able to stop Alvin Kamara in the run game. So a lot of that's going to have to come in the pass game. And I think we looked at Juwan Johnson here to go over this two and a half receptions. Um, and, I, and guys, look, I tell you this much. 
if this doesn't happen in like the first half, if he doesn't have two receptions in the first half, he might be dead right on the spot. But I think he can get over all three of these in the first half, as long as Denver, act, I mean, as long as the Saints rather actually possess the ball. So we're going over two and a half with Jawan Johnson. Yep. Without Sertain, that Denver secondary, obviously not uh, what it usually is. Sertain, he was the guy for me that turned that aforementioned 5% play around against the Raiders. He had the big, I was texting you, I said, this play's done. It looked like the Raiders were going to go up 17-3. to Sertain with an 103-yard pick six swung that game. He will not be on the field tonight for the Denver Broncos. Uh, the Saints might be a good teaser piece, too, I think. Even 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 here at three, you tease them up to nine with something on Sunday. Uh, I think that's a good idea as well because, the again, the idea of Bo Nix being favored like this on the road is just astounding to me. And it's such a low total to this game. So, you, you know, teasing through three and seven in games with low totals, often a good approach, uh, says Mr. Wong. I am sure it bothers your sensibilities. It, it, it offends your sensibilities. That uh, that there he is this much of a favorite. I mean, he, uh, Bo Nix on the road, S- stunning on the road. to me, absolutely on, on the, road. the road. So, all right, we gave you Major League Baseball, both series. We gave you the NFL Thursday night football. What more could you need from us? I don't know. There's college football too. But we're not going to get into that. Check out the Power Five you know, for that. By the way, I will say this much. We have had several requests for people to get this song as like a ringtone. We probably need to make this widely available for everybody as a track. Like, I don't know how to do that. On the, we put this whole song on the morning wage. We should make a video. We should make a music video. You know, we can wear glasses and, and hats, like from other people. Glasses and hats, you know? So we, we can dress up. Please like this show. You do that by hitting a thumbs up. And Please make don't. sure you're subscribed to Please the Way don't. to Talk YouTube channel. Please don't. Oh, uh, man. Hit us up on LinkedIn. Why not? <laughs>